Today is Good Friday, which I remember thinking as a child seemed a very strange name to call a day marked by the recollection of dark events. But I've since learned that the name probably came from the historical mangling of an earlier name for this day, God Friday. Which makes sense, because today we are starkly reminded about the true nature of God. As I suggested in my reflection on Palm Sunday, today, God Friday, human illusions about the nature of God are shaken up. Today we remember that there is nowhere in this life where we can be isolated, distanced from the presence of the compassionate God. That God even goes before us into the valley of the shadow of death. Today we walk with Jesus, the one that the Gospel writer Matthew names as God with us. We walk with Jesus along the Via della Rosa, the sorrowful way. We walk with him through Jerusalem and out and up to the hill where he was hung and put to death on a cross. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German pastor and theologian who died in his 30s at the hands of the Nazi. He wrote a number of profound books, including The Cost of Discipleship, a reflection on what it means to walk the way of Jesus even to the cross, and Life Together, a wonderful unpacking of what genuine Christian community looks like. Another book of his writings, which was published after his death, is entitled Letters and Papers from P Prison, and, in, and it includes a hymn, the opening line of which can be translated, All go to God when they are sorely placed. It is found in Together in Song at number 240. The opening line of the third verse of the hymn contains the comforting words which speak into the world's plight at this time. God comes to us when we are sorely placed. But I just want to focus for a few moments on the second verse because it is a reflection on Christ's suffering for us and with us up on that cross. Let me read the whole verse. We go to God when he is sorely placed Find him poor, scorned, unsheltered, without bread, whelmed under the weight of evil, weak or dead. We stand by God then in his hour of grief. In the next few minutes, I invite you to spend time listening and praying as we hear some of the elements of those last hours of Jesus as recorded by the Gospel writer Matthew. Perhaps later in the day, you might read the entirety of the story of Jesus' last hours from one of the Gospels. It's a good thing to do on Good Friday, God Friday. Let us go to God when he is sorely placed. After flogging Jesus, Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Holy God, how can they, we, do that to Jesus? Forgive us when our words or our silence, our action or inaction, do not reflect the way of Jesus. Perhaps even mock his path of service, self-giving love and eternal life. May the words of the hymn writer be our prayer. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. In Jesus' name, Amen. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, 
they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Loving God, we may not know, we cannot tell, what pains he had to bear. But we believe it was for us he hung and suffered there. May we never let the cross of Jesus ever become an empty token. May we never take his death for us for granted. Help us to follow in his way, however hard that may be. In these difficult days of COVID-19, we pray for those who reflect the sacrifice of Jesus, who are risking their lives for us all. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Luma Sabatini. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Now when the centurion and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Let us pray. Compassionate Father, help us to grasp the meaning of the deep mystery of Jesus' cry from the cross. Like the Roman centurion, may we respond in faith and declare him your son. Help us to make the words of the hymn our own. Were the whole realm of nature mine, it would be an offering far too small. For here is love so amazing, so divine, which demands my soul, my life, my all. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Go in peace. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on the cross, keep you and strengthen you this day and forevermore. Amen.